complaints of women, which was okay up to a point, but he got rather deaf, which I understand. And so listening to women's chess when you're slightly deaf wasn't an asset uh, in the long run. And he had to have quite a bit of support, financial support from his son Ernest. But anyway, that's by the by. Chaplin joined the Merchant Navy when he was 16 and uh, went uh, as a ship's boy on Horton Tower, which is a fully rigged clipper sailing ship. Went round the world, round Cape Horn. Um, his captain at the end of the first trip said of Shackleton, He's the most pig-headed, obstinate boy I ever came across. But there's no real fault to find with him, and he can do his work right well. Someone was washed overboard going around Cape Horn, which, which we won't do, so hopefully that won't happen to any of us. And um, the ship, the, the, in the in second trip around Cape Horn, they nearly sank. Uh, the third trip, he was, Shackleton was very nearly seriously injured by the masts and wires falling on top of him. But he eventually got his master's certificate, and... Um, on his last ship, the captain said he was contented with his own company, never stood aloof, eager to talk, showed determined, self-reliant, fearless, and dominant personality, but he was very human, very sensitive. Now, what happened next? A big chance. One of the people on the passenger ship had a dad, a wealthy dad, uh, sorry, he was involved in, partly in passenger ships as well, um, a wealthy dad who sponsored the first serious attempt by the British to try and explore Antarctica more, resulting from the International Geographical Congress in 1895, explore Antarctica more with, with the little goal of getting to the South Pole, maybe. And this man who organized this was an autocratic, uh, at this time rather crusty old Victorian called Clements <coughs> Markham. And he was uh, taken with Shackleton, I think, to begin with, and uh, Shackleton actually got um, a, a position on this ship uh, without an interview. And the plan was to come down to Antarctica, go into this Ross Sea, which remember has this open, uh, sometimes has this open areas of ice in the, in the early summer, and go to along the coast here, find somewhere to make a hut, and then you know up you go across the Ross Ice Shelf up to the South Pole. The ship was called the Discovery, purposely built in by Alexander Stevens in Dundee in Scotland. And the leader of that expedition, hand chosen by uh, Markham, was uh, Falcon's grandfather, uh, Robert Falcon Scott. Second in command was Eddard, or Bill Wilson, who was an incredibly good artist, a very, um, what's the word, a, a, a wonderfully spiritual man, very austere. He was once having, um, staying in some lodgings or a hotel uh, in London, and he had a bath, and he found himself um, um, turning on the hot water tap, and he got very upset, but he said, I must never turn on the hot water tap again. Um, so he was um, um, very um, um, rigorous, and uh, as I say, a bit of an east seat, if you say. Now, the team that went, uh, this is a photograph, initial one, and here we are all lined up, here's Captain Scott, here's Shackleton. Now, if you look carefully along the row, you, um, this, is a, this is another Shackleton, two Shackleton. This is called William Shackleton. But where was he from? Yorkshire. And for some reason, Scott fired him without much reason. The initial thing was, oh, you've got terrible teeth, you better go. And so William Shackleton went back to Yorkshire and had his teeth done something with him and came back and got that, that was it. And he was replaced by someone called Bernacci, who wrote of Shackleton and got quite a well with Shackleton. As he traveled south, Shackleton, Bernacci said, is just as he'd been in his former ship, ships, Shackleton was the life and soul of the discovery. His mind was alert, his good humor inexhaustible. He was a self-reliant seaman, fearless and dominant, with a stern regard for detail and discipline. In his deep Irish voice, he could wheedle and coax successfully if he required something, which he generally did. He was essentially a fighter, afraid of nothing and of nobody, but with all, he was human. I think that's a good quality. Uh, over overflowing with kindness and generosity, affectionate and loyal to all his friends. So this is the ship, the Discovery, uh, leaving uh, Littleton Harbour, and uh, it's a rather unfortunate um, uh, um, photograph because one of the seamen who had uh, enjoyed himself with alcoholic beverages on shore uh, got rather too much Dutch courage and went up the mainmast, and here is the crow's nest where one should normally stop and sit inside this sort of barrel to keep a lookout. And when he went above the crow's nest, and a couple of minutes later, he fell to his death. 
which is rather uh, tragic. Um, anyway, they got into the Ross Sea uh, and uh, set up their hut on Ross Island. This is Shackleton's first trip to Antarctica. The 